Hi, this is Mark Morrell from Toon Barn, and we're here at the Paley Center for Media in New York City, and we're here for the world premiere of Justice League versus Bizarro League, the latest Lego DC Comics original movie. And I'm here with Troy Baker, and he did the voice of Batman. I did indeed. It's a pleasure to see you as always. Yeah, it's so much fun. I mean, and uh, obviously, you know, Lego games, Lego movies. Uh, I actually sat down over the Christmas break and sat down with my nephew and actually put together the uh, the Batcave, and we spent, I think, the entire the entirety of of the a vacation putting that thing together so it's been a while since I actually sat down and like put the bricks and everything together there's like moving gears everything now too so I, I love the fact that um, Lego is as popular as it is uh, with, with kids of all ages um, and especially the fact that we keep doing these stuff because there's so much within the universe to explore right there's so many different variations of Lego now there's the, the plastic pieces obviously and then there's the, the Lego video games done by TT Games and then you know the Lego original movies these are awesome you know, did you do the voice of both this Batman and that Batman? We did, and actually everybody did the Bizarro versions of themselves, uh, which is super fun to do, because a lot of times we're, with, with the movie specifically, um, we will kind of record together. It's more like a radio play, like old style uh, 40s radio play. So we were all cracking each other up, because hey, Bizarro has to be this! <laughs> you know, so we had a lot of fun exploring what that version of this character would look like. You have to move around when you do no, it. you and you have to move very <laughs> stiffly when you do it too. Yeah. And make your hands like this when you do it. So. I don't know why they do this. Was there any difference between the voice of Lego Batman 3's Batman and this Batman? No, you know, I mean, unfortunately, there's there's a good through line. We want people to believe that it's the same character. Um, the, the story kind of drives a little bit of the personality, obviously. In these, Superman is still annoying, you know, to Batman. Uh, and so there's that lovely lot of t t uh relationship that they have. But, uh, and, you know, it, it's he's honestly one of the easiest characters to play in this because he just has to be, like, broody <laughs> the entire time. And, you know, he's still kind of not sure how he feels about being a part of the Justice League. And so that kind of plays into it as well. But, I mean, I'm surrounded by the most amazingly talented people in the business. I'm Nolan North, who plays Superman. Uh, obviously, James Earl Taylor, who plays Flash. I mean, you've got these incredible actors that are coming in that truly love these characters and truly love this franchise. And we're just having the time of our lives trying to make the best movie we can. You know, Mark Hamill said, if, if somebody else is going to play the Joker, it's got to be Troy Baker, because he did a fantastic job as the Joker. But to get to play both, it's like you were saying, it's like, how cool. Is that fun? Do you have those conversations as yourself, as both? Oh, man. <laughs> could, you, could, we, could we prompt you to give us a little <laughs> Joker? <laughs> The mistrust that, that Batman has for Superman, yes. that's, that's been documented quite well over the, over the years and everything, yeah. but how does it really come to play? I mean, he, he really just joins the Justice League because he wants to watch over Superman, right? Well, and that honestly goes to more of like the graphic novel storylines. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of the darkest storylines ever that, you know, Batman has. And you saw this in Lego Batman too, where, where Batman has like all of the secrets of every one of the Justice League members, just in case there's a panic button, he knows how to push it on each person. So like he keeps a, you know, store of kryptonite for Superman. Mm -hmm. So um, that's definitely something we explored in the previous movies and it's something we're exploring here too, is like, you know, Batman just doesn't trust anyone. And and of course, there's a bigger lesson to be learned for everyone. So I think you can see where the movie's going. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something that's super fun to explore is, is to be able to, again, what I love about Lego is that they pull from all of the iterations of the franchise like Batman or whether it be Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or whatever, Indiana Jones. And it, it makes something that may not be as accessible to someone who's younger or someone who does remember growing up with Indiana Jones or Batman series and being able to see all of the fan service that they do for it. Um, that's, that's the coolest thing for me. And if you, like, when I'm with my nephews, like, what does that mean, Uncle Troy? I'm like, well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> you know, and you get to throw back to, like, you know, Adam West in 66 Batman or the, you get to introduce them to, like, the Tim Burton series. So it's, it's like a really cool um, gateway to all of the iterations of these incredible franchises. I love that we're able to take kind of these darker storylines and present them in a different way and still have that nugget of truth that, that is true to the, to the original comic book stories. Um, but, you know, he's a, he's a Boy Scout, and, and, you know, 
Batman likes to be dark and groovy. Look at the colors. It's the dark and the gray and the black and the dark and the gray and the black. So you've met all these people. You've been in all these, these different uh, iterations of the franchise. If you had a few kids sitting around, what story would you tell them first? I don't know. This is a really good one, especially if there's little kids. You kind of want to like, you know, I wouldn't necessarily want to go like Dark Knight Returns, you know. Um, you wouldn't go Frank Miller. So here's what happens. <laughs> Batman's old and decrepit. Um, but there's there's something cool about um, the, the way that, that especially Lego tells these kind of stories in a way that makes it incredibly successful and, and, and incredibly accessible, too, um, to kids. So this is actually one of the ones that I would want to tell is, you know, because you have characters like Darkseid that's coming in. You've got the Bizarro, which I think is a really cool. It was. I remember growing up in the you know in the eighties watching the Super Friends and everything, and and Bizarro was always kind of just like he's a lummox, you know. But there's something that I never, I don't think, understood because I always looked at Bizarro as a um, as an like an enemy, as a villain, right. and he's not. And so that's one thing that we got to see. Yeah, he's misunderstood, yeah. and Superman loves him. So uh, that's something that we explore here. So this is actually one of the the first stories that I would sit down with a group of kids and tell. I mean, who wouldn't want to be Superman? Especially when you look like. I mean, I think Batman might be slightly more attractive and a little bit cooler. Um, the, the, the monochrome thing, a little bit of pop of yellow as opposed to going as bright and ostentatious as we can so you can fly. Do you, can you, do you have gadgets? Do you have a cool car? No. I think Batman's cooler. <laughs> All right. I think we can agree on that. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. On Absolutely, Tuesday. man. Cheers. Always good to see you. You as well, dude. Thank you.